Hi, this is Glenn with Crimson Lotus Tea um, here in Genshui. This is the uh, the remains of the original uh, the original Genshui factory, which would have operated for uh, for quite a long time here in Genshui. It is uh, slated for uh, for deconstruction. They are uh, removing uh, a lot of stuff in Genshui and making way for uh, for for new stuff uh, for good and bad, I guess. Um, so I wanted to take the chance to uh, kind of tour this uh, tour this factory. I've never actually been up here before. Um, so it's probably going to be torn down within the next uh, six months or something like that. So pretty excited uh, for the chance to kind of come in here and dig around. So it's, it's amazing, amazing, literally amazing the amount of history that's, uh, that's gone through this place. There's just discarded pottery everywhere, machines and stuff. And so we're going to dig through, uh, see what we can find and uh, show it to you guys. Most of the stuff that would have gone through this factory would have been uh, Tzu Tao, as it's called in Chinese, and it's just a, a functional, functional pottery. So bowls and dishes and vases and stuff like that. This is this is uh, purely production, less less specific about the uh, about the artistic angle. So here's a bunch of uh, uh, pottery molds that, that would have been used during the uh, during the production. Um, <clears throat> This is a big facility. There's probably about 15 different buildings and stuff here, and I'm not even entirely certain what a lot of the old, uh, a lot of the old machines, uh, machines do. Uh, it's possible these were were, were used for uh, uh, producing, uh, uh, producing the, uh, the the clay, the composite, as they uh, as they would uh, crush it into different stuff. This may have actually been used to break uh, break apart uh, old clay to possibly be uh, be be reused. Uh, but again, I'm not entirely certain. It, the size of this place is really amazing. There is stuff everywhere um this was a like i said this was a a very well used uh, well used facility and it was for uh for for more than 60 years as far as uh, as far as i can tell from uh from from the, the people that i've talked to um and it's obviously in in significant disrepair and has been for uh, for quite a while most of the uh, production of uh Genshui stuff has moved to a uh, uh, smaller smaller independent shops um still pretty cool to be able to go through these uh old facilities and see what they uh what they were and what they were used for um pretty cool we're gonna see if i can find some uh find some kilns too it's really amazing just the amount of stuff that's just left um mid-process pots uh lots of lots and lots and lots of the stuff um no idea what the goal is for any of these i mean it's it's obviously not discarded. Somebody's going to. Uh, well, I mean, it has the feeling of being discarded, but somebody still owns the factory, and I'm sure there's still uh, uh, somebody owns the uh, owns the stuff as well. But um, uh, it is kind of sad to see uh, see a lot of it uh, a lot of it seemingly uh, seemingly going to waste. Um, it's interesting. This isn't. Um, traditionally known for uh, Genshui isn't traditionally known for some of this style, so it's possible that some outside contractor or a company wanted them to make some stuff and um, just make it in just regular ordinary mass produced uh, mass produced wares not the uh, really high quality uh, single stuff that uh, Jinchu is known for these days this is pretty cool not even entirely certain what uh, what would have been brought up and down in here probably clay clay is heavy be nice to have an elevator um, a lot of old uh, carts and stuff down there These are some original uh, clay processing machines. So a lot of the uh, the, the rock and stuff, uh, the, the clay as it's as it's pulled out of the ground, is put into these machines and turned and turned and turned and crushed and, and pressed until it can get into a uh, get into usable clay. There's a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of different steps that are actually uh, required into that. But uh, using those big machines is uh, certainly part of it. These are a couple old style mixing troughs uh, set up to work with uh, modern electricity. Uh, looks like this one still has just a bunch of a uh, Bunch of bunch of stuff left in there would have dried out like that, so it doesn't look like much thought was put into uh, when the stuff was closed down. Here's another one. You can see how like large large vats of clay would have been put in here to be uh, to be to be mixed before they were uh, before they were made into uh, pottery. Found another level of the factory, just more and more and more. This uh, this teaware, there's just tons of it. Excuse me, this isn't teaware. Whatever these uh, whatever these pots were intended for. Factory closed down before uh, I could actually get uh, to their final destination. Um, I got to admit, it's kind of sad. Okay. 
can't tell if they were uh, meant to have uh, lids or uh, not. I'm sure they're probably just uh, just used for uh, for flowers or something like that. This just gives a bit of a view of uh, some of the scale of uh, of, of this place. Uh, it's not super large, but it, it was it was it was significant. This would have been a a very productive uh, place to work back in the day. Um, we're gonna you can see the original uh, original smokestack is still there. That's probably all they'll keep. They'll keep that and turn maybe just the kiln into a bit of a uh, bit of a tourist spot. Um, and then uh, we'll get over and check out the kiln in a minute. Uh, I found one of the old uh, mold making machines. So this would have been uh, would have been used to uh, uh, create uh, reproducible uh, pottery from a from a master mold. And uh, it's 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 pretty cool. It's dirty. It's actually fairly fairly modern machine. It's probably not more than a. 15 or 20 years old, I'm gonna guess. Top level of the newer part of the old factory. A lot of really nice big large pieces. Um, these are pretty cool. It would have been nice to have seen what, uh, what they were like when it, was, uh, when it was finished. There's some more little workstations and stuff up and around here. Uh, I'm not entirely certain when, when this factory was, uh, was last used in production. Doesn't seem like it was that long ago, even though the whole place looks really, really old. I love it. Here's the, uh, here's the elevator. That's it. About as simple as you can get. One big winch motor, and that would have uh, obviously been used to bring the uh, bring the pottery up and down. Uh, those are all molds, so they would have uh, had the capacity to do uh, to do a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. Just some nice, uh, nice simple. Uh, Simple bowls, molds, molds, and the bowls that came out of them. Obviously, this stuff never even uh, never made it to to get fired. It's still pretty brittle. Like uh, like all good factories in China, it's nice to have some inspirational uh, quotes from the uh, the leader Mao. It's a pretty cool view. Cool view that's not going to be seen for uh, not going to be seen for much longer. It's a nice big view from the top of a. Uh, Original factory all the way down to uh, so this is Wanya Village down here. You can see all the new production. Um, they're working hard. They're working really hard, getting a lot of uh, making a lot of progress. A lot of construction teams going on uh, over there in those woods is where the uh, one of the uh, the dragon kilns is that we're going to try and uh, try and get over to see. But uh, they've been doing a lot of work, a lot of progress, and it's uh, it's 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 good to see that. Um, but it is sad to see the uh, sad to see the old going away. Um, so the, the uh, if you look all the way down here, this is a uh, this is Wanyao Wanyao Village down here, and that's the street that we were uh, walking down in the uh, in the last video. From this side, you can see a lot of the uh, a lot of the progress that's being made. So eventually, um, eventually, all that area is going to be going to be developed. Um, they've been working really hard to make these uh, uh, kind of like these man-made, really beautiful lakes. It's going to be very uh, resort style, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. You can see in the distance where they uh, where they actually dig a lot of the uh, dig a lot of the clay out. Um, only a few people are actually allowed to uh, to go up there and do the digging, um, and then they uh, they work and blend it and sell it to uh, sell it to the others. But uh, there's still a lot of clay. There's a lot of clay up here. Um, some of the villagers say that you know there's like 500 years worth. Uh, I don't know about that. They, uh, they're going through it pretty quick. Um, it'll be interesting to see how long it actually lasts. So we're inside the original factory and this is one of their, uh, their original kilns. Still loaded. That's, uh, that's amazing. Um, so you can see how they've got these, uh, these cart and, uh, and rail systems here. And what they would do is they would have them attached to these, uh, these motors and that's how they would actually get their stuff in in and out of the kiln because it's a it's actually a long kiln it's probably about 100 feet long it's not a dragon kiln so it doesn't climb um but it is uh it's actually another kiln right there they probably had at their peak uh according to this rail right here there was probably a kiln there they probably had three or four uh four kilns actually running in here continuously and uh the pottery that's still in there goes back uh goes back quite a ways so you'll see that they uh, they would actually stack stuff inside of other stuff. So the stuff on the outside would get that wood fire glaze, and then the stuff on the inside uh, uh, wouldn't, because it would be covered up and protected by the stuff. So they could actually uh, sell stuff with with and without that, depending on what the customer uh, what the customer wanted. So here you see a lot of the uh, the pots that we had uh, seen on the other side of the factory. 
they're entirely enclosed. So this way they don't get that wood smoke glaze and they, uh, they create a very, uh, very consistent look. Um, and these are all, all uh, carts that would have been used to slide in and out of the kiln. And uh, it's really impressive to, uh, really impressive to see that. Uh, it's pretty cool. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff here. Um, so I'm not entirely certain if there's a way to, uh, for the carts to, uh, to change tracks or if they were always on one track, but it looks like you can load, load in and load out from, uh, from, from both sides. Um, I'm not entirely certain how the, uh, production actually, uh, actually worked, um, uh, how, how this would have actually looked like if it was continuously operating. Um, but it's pretty interesting to see that's super dark inside of there. Uh, there's an even longer kiln on this side, um, which is kind of cool. Um, not entirely certain what, uh, what that access port would have been for, maybe to inspect some of the pottery mid-firing. I'm not entirely, not entirely certain as well. I don't know what this, uh, this mechanism is here, unless it was used for, uh, uh, drying some stuff out, because it doesn't really go to anything, but, uh, it looks like it's set up to, uh, to actually uh, process the uh, process the teaware, maybe as it was coming out, it helps it to uh, helps it to dry and cool off. I don't know. It's impressive. It's impressive being in here. This is a this is a big facility, and it was a it's quite a quite a productive one too. This is another one of the uh, uh, tumbling tumbling clay blenders. So it looks like they would actually bring some of the clay up to the top, drop it into a, a chute down below, and then on the inside is where we saw those uh, machines that were doing the uh, uh, the stirring. So it's part of the uh, part of the process, right? There. So these access hatches down here, uh, Lamo pointed out that they uh, probably where the uh, the wood fire was actually built. So these would have been wood fired kilns, and um, that's pretty impressive. So. You would have had to have a uh, continuous fire operating up and down the uh, the length of a kiln like this to uh, keep the the heat consistent throughout. This is a massive kiln. This is 200 feet long, probably. I'm going to guess. I don't know. I haven't found the entrance to this one yet. So I had mentioned a little earlier about um, how things were stacked. So you've got these pieces right here, and this piece was designed for no other reason than just to uh, keep the smoke off of the pieces that would have gone inside of there. And so, for example, this one would have had uh, these uh, types of uh, bowls would have gone uh, would have gone into there, and then it would have been stacked up. And so, and then you would have had just you know like tons and tons and tons and tons of them, and, um, and that way it doesn't get the uh, doesn't get the smoke on it. Um, Smoke glaze is, is advantageous for artistic purposes, but if you're doing a production type run, uh, not everybody wants uh, not everybody wants that. So uh, so they cover it up like that, which is uh, which is pretty interesting. More more teacups or uh, not teacups, but uh, uh, bowls. Uh, hundreds of them. So these ones, uh, these ones have been dried, but these ones haven't been haven't been fired yet, and um, that's kind of amazing because they've been here for uh, for quite a while tons and tons of them did find the entrance to the uh that big super long kiln so we can go and kind of take a look uh take a look through that one this is that really long kiln i got my flashlight set up there is still stuff down there a long ways down there it's hard to tell how uh how far back it actually goes but um yeah this thing was just shut off uh shut off mid-process That's pretty awesome. So this right here would have been how uh, how they got air into the kiln. Got like a forced uh, forced blower system, bring it all the way up to the top, and uh, that's uh, that's how they would have uh, fed the fire, because um, it would have been a significant amount of a uh, significant amount of uh, heat was needed to uh, fire a kiln this size. <laughs> it almost looks like a little tiny uh, little tiny pizza oven. Um, yeah, and then this would have been uh, this would have been where they uh, where they did the fires. Fire on the top, uh, so the ash falls down to the bottom. So you'd actually have to have somebody digging the digging the ash out the entire time. Looks like this is the last of a uh, last of some uh, some coal deposit. So instead of it being wood fired, it's probably more uh, more of a coal fired kiln, which definitely makes a makes a lot of sense. Um, so we're on the uh, we're on the outside of the. Outside of the facility now, just kind of checking out what's uh, what's around here. We've not actually seen one, uh, seen a kiln like this one before. This is a uh, this is pretty cool. It's big, 
and uh, it's round. And uh, some slots on the outside for uh, fire and um, bring everything in, stack it all up, and then just start like a really big, uh, really big fire underneath here. Not entirely certain how uh, stable the ground is, so I'm a little, uh, little hesitant. So yeah, fires would be, uh, fires would be built down there, and uh, and the smoke would just, uh, just go straight out the, uh, straight out the top, and um, maybe there's still uh, stuff under there. No, just, uh, just left over. Uh, pretty cool. I'm not sure what the, this type of kiln is called. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to check, ask around. You definitely see stuff like this all around kilns out here. Just leftover stuff. I don't know, maybe the person didn't pay for it after it was made. Um, I'm guessing these are maybe, uh, for fermenting alcohol. I'm not entirely certain, but there's just, uh, there's just tons of them. Just piled. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, there's, there's definitely a sacrificial aspect to it. So I'm not entirely certain maybe if these didn't, didn't, weren't fired properly, had some issue with them. I don't know, but there's um, there's just a lot, a lot of them. We'll see even, uh, you see more down the hill. There's just uh, just everywhere, just tons of like uh, like bones of a discarded enemy, just just scattered everywhere. And uh, it's cool, it's kind of cool to see and dig through some of these things. Um, but who knows what they're gonna do with it. Probably just crush it up and use it for, uh, use it for, uh, use it for landfill in whatever, fancy new apartment building gets built up here. It's a pile of a uh, pile of clay deposit. You'll, you'll see these sitting around in Yunnan. Um, this one actually looks like it was a, uh, not Yunnan, I mean in Genshui. This one looks like it was actually processed at some point in time and then uh, and then left here. It's still uh, it's still usable. Um, you can take it, you can break it down and um, turn it back into uh, into usable clay. Um, it's, um, it's interesting to see just such a giant pile like this sitting around though. It's probably got some uh, some value to it. This is one of the uh, the clay, this is one of the clay processing rooms. I'll show you this machine right here. Uh, so electric motor, put a lot of the uh, the clay, uh, see if we can get a light on there, put a lot of the clay stuff into there and kind of like this like auger press kind of like works it and crushes it down until out of this side here you get something that's, uh, something that's a little bit more usable. Um, well, obviously this machine was just turned off, although it's still just clay in it, never even cleaned. Um, but a lot of uh, excess stuff uh, sitting around. When I had originally shown you guys uh, these pots upstairs, I didn't realize what they were for. So uh, Lama very quickly pointed out, because she's from Yunnan, knows exactly what these are for. And these are for fermenting vegetables. So you fill in, a, you, well, you put all the vegetables and whatever mix and stuff you need to, uh, to, to ferment them inside of there. And then you fill, fill this up with water, and you take a separate, uh, separate cup like this, and you put that over the top. This one doesn't look like it's specifically designed for that, but that's the idea. You put that over the top and then it actually creates a uh, uh, creates a water seal inside of there and so then you can uh, ferment your veggies pretty cool that seems to be about uh, about everything uh, that's interesting in this uh, in this factory um, there's some some worker rooms and storage stuff further down but uh, the, the pottery related stuff is all but we've, we've kind of looked through all of it it's pretty cool it's super interesting and um, really uh, glad for the opportunity to uh, get a chance to uh, check this place out before it gets torn down and I'm glad that you guys got a chance to uh, check it out with us uh, follow the rest of our videos we're gonna be in Yunnan for another couple more months and um, filming awesome stuff when we can find it so like and subscribe and um, check out our videos we appreciate it thank you this is a uh, this is a final note this is pretty interesting so we're hiking back and uh, this is on the outside outside wall the factories on the right <laughs> this entire path is just littered with uh, with broken shards of pottery, as if uh, stuff that didn't make it in the kiln just got like tossed straight over the uh, straight over the walls of the factory, and it's just piled out here. The ground is just uh, just covered with this stuff. Uh, it's kind of cool. Some of it's glazed, some really interesting patterns and stuff, and some of the shapes and pieces and stuff. I and mean, there's also tons of garbage and things. But uh, historically, some really interesting. Historical pieces of pottery have been found in the remains of old uh, old kilns stuff that it was uh, broken and left over, and then the, they got disused for a couple hundred years. People dig them up later, so maybe hundred years from now, people are going to come dig up uh, dig up this factory and uh, pull out some rare, priceless gems. Only time will tell.